So now we're going to talk about status codes and how we change status codes. And we're going to look at a practical example as well of uh, when something isn't found, perhaps we want to show a custom 404 page and change over the HTTP status to 404. So just before we do anything, let's just from any kind of controller method return the response object we get back in here. Now we've already had a little look at this response object. We're going to be diving back into this in just a minute, just so we can see some of the methods that we're going to use and some of the default status codes. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, just check this out in the browser. I have a root set up for forward slash topics, uh, which is hitting this method. So if we come over to the browser and give this a refresh, uh, you'll notice that we just see nothing. All we're doing is we're responding with a basic response. There's no data in here. Uh, the status code is the default. We're not doing anything else. Now to demonstrate this, I'm going to go ahead and bring up my developer tools because over in the network tab, uh, if we make sure that we are on the all filter, if we give this a refresh, we can see that the status code here is a default of 200 OK. So let's say that we wanted to just modify this. Now with the response, if we just check out the response object, you can see in here that the default status code is 200, which is an OK request. It's just a general uh, OK. Now, if we want to change the status code, and this is usually useful for APIs, but it can be useful for web as well. All we do is we use the with status method. We pass in a code and we're done. So in this case, we can go ahead and modify this. For example, with status, maybe we have a 404. So if something isn't found. If we come over to the browser, give this a refresh, you can see that the status has changed to 404. And it's obviously really important to send across the correct status. So the browser knows how to handle this. So anyone consuming an API that you're building knows how to handle this. Now, what we can also do is we can modify the response before we then go and return it. So for example, if we wanted to say response equals the current response, but then we wanted a status on to this like so, we could do that. We could do anything else down here we wanted. And then we could go ahead and simply return that response object and we get the same result. So changing over the status code could be for anything. Maybe you're validating something when someone's posting a topic or registering. And I've opened up this really helpful resource here that will give you a good overview of the different status codes that you can and should use uh, depending on what has happened. So there's lots to choose from here. You've got lots of 200, you've got redirection, client errors, server errors. So you can choose one uh, appropriate. And I'll leave this link in the course links for you to have a look for. So let's take a look at an example of what happens if something isn't found. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of this out of the index and we're going to bring in a new method here. This would be to show a topic. So let's go ahead and change this to show and uh, let's go over and change over our roots as well. Now we know that into this we would take in an ID like so. And of course what we would do is change this over. And now what we can do is come over to topics slash one or two or whatever the ID is and show that topic. So over in the topic controller, then we would look this up in the database. And I do have the table that we looked at a little bit earlier in the series as well. So I can very quickly and easily go ahead and grab this topic. So let's just do this quickly. So we're going to say database query, or in this case, we would use a prepared statement because we're going to be taking through the arguments that are passed in. And we would say select everything from topics where that ID equals that ID. And then down here, we would go ahead and execute this. So topic execute. And in this case, we would pass through the ID that we get through in the URI. So let's just go ahead and grab that from args. And now we can go ahead and say topic fetch or topic equals topic fetch. We could go ahead and fetch it as an object and pass it through down to a view. Now we already know how to do this. So just to demonstrate, I'm going to do a var dump. But in this case, you'd pass it down to your view. And as we've already seen a few times before, just output anything you needed here. So if we just go over, we know that we've got topic IDs one to five. So let's come over and hit this here. And we should see uh, as long as we go ahead and pull PDO in, or of course, just prefix that with a backslash, we will see the following. So we get that object. Now, what happens if something doesn't exist? Well, let's go ahead and grab ID 99. We know that that doesn't exist. And you can see here we get a bool false. Now, in the case of this 
existing, you would just go ahead and return your view and render that out. And you would, of course, use a 200 status. So you wouldn't have to modify anything about the status. But what you might want to do is handle this slightly differently. So for example, you could do an if statement here, and then you could say if the topic is false, meaning it can't be found, then you could very easily render a view here changing over your status code. So let's take a look at doing this. I'm going to go over to my views and I'm going to create a kind of general errors folder. Inside of this, I could create a 404.twig view just here and say not found. You can obviously change this to whatever you want. So in here then, the first thing that we would do is we would return that view. So in here, I could say return this container view and I could go ahead and render that passing down the response and I could go into errors and pull out 404.twig. So if we can't find a topic, we render a 404. And of course, because we're returning at this point, we'll never hit this line, which would be uh, you outputting the topic on the page. So let's give this a refresh. We know that this one works and let's go back over to 99 and you can see that we got not found. Now, the only problem here is we're still giving through a 200 OK, which isn't really good. It will still work and, you know, it won't interfere with what your user's doing, but it's always best practice to pass these status codes down. So in this case, all we would need to do is go ahead and say response equals response with status 404. And remember, we're passing the response into here. So we will already have that available when we go and render this out to the page just here. So let's come over, give that a refresh, and you can see not only are we giving that view, we also have a 404. Now you could further tidy this up. So for example, you wouldn't really have to do this here. Instead, you could say response with status 404. So you could do that all in line and that's a little bit cleaner. And what you could do if you wanted to reuse this over and over again, you could just simply add it to your base controller. So you could create a new method in here. So perhaps a protected method called render 404. You could go ahead and do this. And then from your topic controller, all you would have to do in here is go ahead and return this render 404 and you're done. So that's a little bit more convenient. You have it in here and you can reuse it throughout all of your controllers and throughout all of your methods. And of course, if you needed to update this at any point, you'd only have to update it in one place. So let's go over, give that another refresh. And of course, in this case, because we are using response in here, what we would actually have to do is also, of course, pass through our response uh, when we go ahead and use that method. So in this case, we get exactly the same result. A not found view has been rendered and we have changed over the status code. So depending on what you're building, maybe you want a validation error, maybe you want just a general error, a 404 or anything like that, you can go ahead and use resources like this one here to give you a good idea of which status code you could use. Like I said, though, this is more useful for API development. And in the next part, we're going to take a look at some API development. We're going to grab a list of topics and we're going to output them as a JSON response. In the case of a web example, this should be really helpful because you can now render a 404 if something isn't found.